Okay, fashion design, our first chapter. Uh, this is a PowerPoint on understanding clothing. We're starting at the very beginning. You're going to be taking Cornell notes uh, today, slides 1 through 20. And this is from the Goodhart Wilcox textbook uh, PowerPoint. And um, so slides 1 through 20, and then the rest will be tomorrow. So our learning target is to analyze how clothing helps satisfy human needs. Okay, so clothing meets human needs. All people share basic human needs. Um, a need is something required for a person's continued survival. Um, the famous psychologist Abraham Maslow uh, suggested that humans are motivated to satisfy five basic types of needs. Okay, so the five basic types of needs are physical needs, and then safety and security, love and acceptance, esteem, and self-actualization. These needs can be arranged from the least to the most important, and a person must satisfy their lower needs before meeting their higher needs. So we're going to uh, talk about all of these needs, but how it relates to fashion, we're going to start at the very bottom. Okay, so here is the pyramid of Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. So it starts with physical needs. So what it is at the very bottom is food, clothing, and shelter. And so in our very, very basic, we need to have clothing. And why do we need to have clothing? So clothing helps satisfy physical needs for protection, comfort. So protection, it helps uh, us from the elements, um, heat and cool and um, sunburn and uh, just the harsh environment uh, keeps us al protects us a little bit from being injured um, for comfort so that we can feel warm and cozy whenever it's cold outside and whenever it's cool we want uh, hot we want to wear something that's cooler so that we're not too hot and for safety it protects us um, for from uh, maybe possibly being attacked being attacked by uh, predators or even protection from other humans. So protection from the weather is clothing's most important physical role. I don't know if you've ever watched any of the um, shows on TV, the uh, Alone, and where they're out in Alaska wilderness and they're surviving for a hundred days, or um, Naked and Afraid is one of the shows that I have watched where uh, they go there and they have no clothing and it is the environment is very harsh to their bodies. So protection is is the most important physical role. So name some you could name some examples of clothing that provide protection, comfort and safety. Um, so what physical need is this clo is clothing in this situation? What is it uh, doing? You can write that on the edge of your Cornell notes. Okay, safety and security needs. Clothing can keep you safe from harm or injury in sports, such as football. You wear the helmet, the shoulder pad. So there's uh, a grid here, face uh, grid that's protecting your face from when the, the football player gets tackled. Um, I've seen many tackles my son and my husband play played um, where they get tackled and then there's grass in uh, the grid of the helmet and um, so you could see the force of it um, and then uh, cycling they where they have um, a helmet for riding the uh, bike and they wear uh, specific shoes that fit well into the <clears throat> the pedals and hockey they wear huge things of padding um, because the ice is very very hard and um, 
they're getting the other team is hitting the, the puck with the hockey stick and is very uh, they need protection other occupations such as firefighter construction worker or medical personnel so firefighters they have all this gear that they wear um, in addition to that gear they also have their oxygen tanks and um, to keep them uh, from breathing smoke smoke inhalation and uh, construction workers they wear hard hats they wear face uh, masks to keep the dust out of their face and then medical personnel we're we're very aware of what medical personnel are wearing because of COVID-19 face shields mask and they even wear booties on for their shoes Okay, so some of our other needs. The next step is love and acceptance needs. People have a need to receive affection from others. People want to feel like they belong to a group. And these needs can guide people in their clothing choice. So um, let's say you're um, in a, on a team. Everybody wants to wear the same color to be part of the team. Okay. Um, and then we have modesty, covering the body according to what is appropriate by society in which a person lives. We would dress far different than um, people who have lived on deserted islands and, um, and they have the heat. We would dress far differently here in the city than, than we would in um, those, or than people have in those situations. And there are standards of modesty. They vary by culture. They can change over time. And uh, just from what women wore in the 1800s uh, then to the 20s, all the different decades, and you will study that. Conformity. Following or obeying some set of standard or authority in order to feel accepted. Conformity can result from peer pressure. So let's say all of your friends are wearing a certain kind of jeans or a certain kind of t-shirt or you're doing your hair a certain way that um, translate into everyone dressing the same. Peer pressure, social pressure an individual feels to adopt a behavior, dress or attitude in order to be accepted by a group. And then you also have the desire to attract the attention of someone you want to date uh, that may influence what you choose to wear. Um, girls change clothes, you know, ten times before a date just because they want to make sure that they um, attract the attention of that uh, special date. Okay, so how do you feel? Peer, peer, how do you feel peer pressure influences your uh, your apparel choices? And you answer that on your Cornell notes. Esteem. Maslow, Abraham Maslow, stated that people have a need for esteem, respect, admiration, recognition, and social approval by others. So we ha we hear a lot about self esteem, but esteem is actually how others feel about us. We want their respect, we want their admiration, we want their recognition, we want to be approved by others. And then there's self-esteem. This is how we feel about ourselves, feeling good about yourself, uh, your feelings of self, self-worth. Um, that has to do with your self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. Clothes can play a role in fulfilling some of these needs. It, it plays a small part, but it does have an effect on how you feel. Okay, there's also self-adornment. Throughout history, people have practiced self-adornment, decorating their bodies. Um, tattoos and earring piercings, those are not new. People follow certain practices to make themselves beautiful according to the customs of their culture. So, um, think of some examples of self-adornment. Write those on the side um, of your Cornell notes. 
Okay, then we have status and prestige. People wear clothing to express status and prestige, wealth and importance. Um, say you were going somewhere to a special uh, fancy restaurant, you would want to dress a little bit better than you would uh, going to school that day. Some clothing symbols indicate achievements. And some people choose clothes to imply that they are of a higher higher status than others. Even though technically we are all the same, if you have achieved a certain uh, rank in, let's say, the military, that would indicate your rank that you have progressed and uh, been promoted to a higher rank. Doesn't have to mean a bad thing. So. Write some examples of clothing that express status and prestige. And what clothing examples reflect a high status? Can you write those, please, on your Cornell notes? Okay, identification. Clothing can often help you identify a person's occupation, their, their rank, for instance, the military or the police or the fire department or um, certain uh, jobs have in, little insignias for um, that you have increased in rank. Even that starts um, with small children and some of the things that they have. Um, sports teams. Okay, so let's go back to occupation. Let's say you're a chef and you wear a chef hat at your job that's identifying you to everyone there that you're the chef. We have lots of things in clothing that do that. Um, then sports teams. Football players have certain clothing. Basketball players have certain clothing. Volleyball players have certain clothing. Um, cross country and track wear certain things. And um, I say the swim team and wrestling. Everyone wears a certain thing that has to do with their sport and it's easily identifiable by the uniform. Certain religious groups have worn uh, different clothing. Let's say uh, the priest and the nun have worn um, specific things that would identify that they are either a priest or a nun. And then ceremonial roles like um, cap and gown for graduation. So those identify um, what the person is doing or involved with. So what do the uniforms here tell you about the wearers? Write that in on the side of your Cornell notes. And that's all for today. And submit your Cornell notes to Canvas, please.